Horace T. Fiddlesworth prided himself on being the most dedicated quantum engineer aboard the Gargantuan, the intergalactic space station that orbited somewhere between the galactic backwater of Glorm and the tourist trap that was the pleasure planet of Zilforax 9. He liked things neat, predictable, and, most of all, quiet. Three things that neither space stations nor pleasure planets were particularly known for. Still, Horace had worked for years to carve out his own little corner of the universe, specifically a cluttered workstation in the station's bowels, surrounded by humming quantum stabilizers and unidentifiable snacks of dubious nutritional value. His work ethic had not gone unnoticed, especially by his boss, Commander Zylar of Rockth, a towering lilac-skinned alien with six eyes, two of which seemed to be perpetually rolling in exasperation, specifically at him. Zylera was a Zilpharaxian, hailing from the aforementioned pleasure planet, which, according to rumor, was less of a planet and more of a 24-7 intergalactic carnival, where absolutely everything was legal so long as you signed a waiver. Horus, however, had no time for rumors. He had quantum stabilizers to stabilize. That was until Zylera appeared one afternoon in his dimly lit workstation, looming over him like a particularly menacing cloud. Fiddlesworth, she said, her voice a silky purr that suggested either deep amusement or the prelude to some form of ritualistic alien dismemberment. I've noticed how hard you've been working. Horace raised an eyebrow but didn't look away from his console. Thank you, ma'am. Just doing my job. Zylera leaned in, her six eyes narrowing with an intensity that made Horace feel like a particularly interesting insect under a magnifying glass. Yes, yes, very hard, very diligent. There was something unsettling about the way she said, diligent. Horace didn't particularly like the direction this conversation was going. He forced a smile, which came out more like a grimace. Well, someone's got to keep the quantum stabilizers from collapsing into a singularity, he said, in a voice that suggested he would rather be anywhere else, including the event horizon of said singularity. Zylera's smile widened, revealing far too many sharp teeth for Horace's comfort. Indeed, which is why. She paused dramatically. I think you've earned a reward. Horace's stomach sank. Rewards were never good. Rewards meant recognition. Recognition meant attention. And attention meant, well, anything but quietly stabilizing quantum fields in peace. A reward? He said, feeling panic rising. No need, really. The work is its own reward, Commander. Love the work. Can't get enough of it. Nonsense. Zylera purred. You've been working so hard, Horace. So hard and I think you deserve a little break. How about lunch? Horace blinked. Lunch? That didn't sound too bad. Lunch was normal. People had lunch, even quantum engineers. Sure, he said with a shrug, thinking, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen began approximately 15 minutes later when Horace found himself seated across from Zylara in the station's cafeteria, nervously nibbling on a sandwich that tasted suspiciously like recycled packing material. So, Horace... Zylera said, leaning forward with a predatory glint in her eyes, have you ever been to Zilpharax 9? Horace froze mid-nibble. Uh, no, I've heard stories though, you know, from the guys. Pleasure planet, right? Not really my scene. He chuckled awkwardly. I'm more of a stay in and recalibrate the stabilizers kind of guy. Zylera's six eyes twinkled with amusement, or perhaps hunger. Oh, you must come with me sometime. I was just thinking of taking a trip down there today. You should come along. Horace nearly choked on his sandwich. Oh no, I couldn't, really. I've got work to do. Stabilizers. Quantum flux. You know how it is. Zylera waved a hand dismissively. Oh, don't worry about that. I've already checked your logs. You're so efficient, Horace. All your work is done. Horace blinked. It is? Hmm. You've been so good at your job, you've outpaced the entire department. Horace had never been more disappointed in his own competence. Well, that's great, I guess. Zylera leaned in even closer, her lilac fingers lightly tapping the table, her six eyes never breaking contact. It is great, which is why you should come with me on a little trip down to the surface. Just a quick shopping trip, really. Shouldn't take long at all. Horace felt the sweat beginning to form on the back of his neck. He didn't like leaving the station, let alone going down to a planet where morals were optional and legality was determined by how much you could bribe the local authorities. Shopping? Horace asked, trying to sound casual, though it came out more like a squeak. 
I didn't think a commander of an intergalactic space station had time for, you know, retail therapy. Zylera grinned, her too many teeth glistening in a way that made Horace shift nervously in his chair. Oh, let's just say I've got a few personal items I need to pick up. Besides, you've never seen Zilforax 9 before. It's an experience every human should have at least once. Horace gulped. Yeah, but I'm not really the experience type. I'm more of a workaholic, you know? Love the grind. Can't get enough of it. What would happen if I left? The whole station could destabilize. You never know. Horace, Zylera said, lowering her voice to a sultry whisper. The station will be fine for a couple of hours. I promise. You've been working so hard. Don't you think you deserve just a little fun? Fun. There was that word again. Horace hated it. It always seemed to precede bad decisions, awkward social interactions, and on one memorable occasion, being chased by a sentient blob of gelatinous goo after a misunderstanding on a distant moon. Fun isn't really my thing, he mumbled, looking around for an escape route. The cafeteria was mostly empty, save for a few other alien crew members who were too engrossed in their meals, or perhaps too terrified of Zylera, to notice the rapidly escalating situation. Nonsense, Zylera said, standing up and gesturing grandly. You're coming with me. That's an order. Horace opened his mouth to protest, but then thought better of it. There was no arguing with her when she got that glint in her eye. And besides, what was the worst that could happen? They'd go down to the planet, browse some shops, and be back before his next shift. Probably. All right, he sighed, standing up and brushing crumbs from his uniform. But just a quick trip, okay? I've got quantum slugs and Nixon fleas to sort out. Of course, Zylera purred, her grin widening as she led the way out of the cafeteria, her long lilac tail swishing behind her. Just a quick trip. Minutes later, Horace found himself strapped into the co-pilot seat of Zylera's personal shuttle, staring out at the rapidly approaching surface of Zilforax 9. From orbit, the planet looked like an iridescent marble, shimmering with neon hues that danced and shifted as the shuttle descended through the atmosphere. The closer they got, the more Horace could make out the chaotic sprawl of the pleasure planet's surface, towering casinos, sprawling bazaars, and what appeared to be a roller coaster that looped around a lava pit. This looks lively, Horace said, gripping the armrests of his seat a little tighter. It's home, Zylera replied with a fond smile, adjusting the controls with practiced ease. Don't let the bright lights fool you. It's really quite charming once you get used to it. Horace had his doubts. The shuttle touched down in what appeared to be a bustling marketplace, filled with stalls selling everything from exotic pets to questionable foodstuffs to what looked like weapons but were described as novelties. The air was thick with the smell of spices, engine oil, and the faint, metallic tang of ozone. As they disembarked, Zylera led the way with a confident stride, weaving through the crowd with the grace of someone who had spent most of her life navigating chaos. Horace, on the other hand, stumbled after her, trying to avoid eye contact with the various vendors who shouted at him in languages he didn't understand. So, um, what exactly are we shopping for? Horace asked, jogging to keep up. Oh, you'll see, Zylera replied cryptically, a mischievous glint in her eyes. They passed a stall selling what appeared to be sentient hats, another displaying jewelry that floated an inch above the velvet cushions, and a particularly unsettling booth offering instant personality upgrades. As they weaved deeper into the chaotic marketplace, Horace couldn't help but notice that the crowds were getting thinner. The bright neon lights and bustling energy of the commercial district gradually dimmed, replaced by narrow alleyways and towering structures with dark windowless walls. The once overwhelming noise of the bazaar faded into the background, replaced by a low hum, almost like the pulse of the planet itself. Uh, Zylara, Horace stammered, glancing nervously around as they walked. This doesn't really look like the shopping district. Zylara didn't answer right away. She just kept walking, her long lilac tail swishing behind her, leading Horace deeper into the maze of towering buildings. The air had grown cooler, the smells sharper, metal, ozone, something vaguely floral but with an undertone that made Horace's stomach tighten. Where are we going exactly? Horace asked, his voice wavering slightly. Zylera finally stopped in front of a large, unmarked building. Its imposing door was made of a sleek, 
dark material that seemed to absorb the light around it. She turned to him, her six eyes glinting in the dim glow of a nearby street lamp. I told you, Horace, she said with a smile, though it no longer seemed as friendly as before. We're going shopping. This is just a private boutique. Horace blinked at the door. A boutique? This looks more like a bunker. Xylera chuckled, placing a hand on the door's surface. Oh, it's much more than that. Come on, you'll love it. Before Horace could muster another protest, the door slid open with a quiet hiss, revealing a dimly lit hallway lined with strange pulsating lights embedded in the walls. Xylara stepped inside without hesitation, leaving Horace standing at the threshold, his instincts screaming at him to turn around and run. But then again, what was he going to do? Tell his boss no? Xylara had a way of making even the most stubborn of objections seem like minor inconveniences to be swept aside. And besides, what was the worst that could happen? Famous last words, he thought bitterly, following her inside. As soon as the door slid shut behind them, Horace's unease intensified. The hallway was narrow and seemed to go on forever, the pulsating lights casting eerie shadows on the walls. He followed Zylara in silence, his heart pounding in his chest. Something wasn't right. They reached the end of the corridor, where another door, this one larger and more ornate, awaited. Zylara turned to Horace, her expression unreadable. You've been such a diligent worker, Horace, she said softly, her voice almost soothing. You deserve a little reward. Horace swallowed hard. You keep saying that, but I'm starting to think your definition of reward isn't quite the same as mine. Zylara smiled, but there was no warmth in it. Trust me, you'll understand soon enough. She pressed a hand to the ornate door, and it slid open to reveal a massive underground chamber. The ceiling stretched high above, and the walls were lined with strange, alien symbols that glowed faintly in the dim light. In the center of the chamber was a massive arena, surrounded by rows of seats carved from stone. The floor of the arena was stained with what looked disturbingly like dried blood. Horace's stomach dropped. This, this isn't a boutique, he whispered, his voice barely audible. Xylera stepped forward, her eyes gleaming with something predatory. No, Horace, it isn't. Welcome to my personal collection. Horace's mouth went dry. Collection? Xylera gestured toward the far end of the arena, where a group of humanoid figures stood in silence, their eyes vacant and their bodies adorned with strange metallic collars around their necks. They were all human. I've spent years curating the finest specimens from across the galaxy, Xylera said, her voice taking on a disturbingly casual tone. Humans, in particular, are so versatile. They're clever, adaptable, and, when properly motivated, excellent fighters. Horace took a step back, his pulse racing. Fighters? Xylera nodded, her tail curling lazily behind her. You see, on Zilforax 9, we're known for our entertainment, gladiatorial combat to be precise. It's a tradition that goes back millennia, and I've found that humans make for the most, what's the word, entertaining participants. Horace's mind raced. Wait, you're saying, you collect humans? For sport? Xylera's smile widened, her sharp teeth glinting in the low light. Horace stood frozen, his mind struggling to comprehend what Xylera had just said. Gladiatorial combat? Humans as prized fighters? And more to the point? Him? He was a quantum engineer, for crying out loud. The closest he'd ever come to a fight was a heated argument over whether Schrodinger's cat should be considered a pet. Xylera continued, gliding across the arena floor with the grace of a predator circling its prey. You see, Horace, I've been watching you for quite some time. Your dedication, your focus, your diligence. I think you'll do quite well here. I'm not a fighter, Horace stammered, taking another step back, his hands instinctively raising as if to ward off what was coming. I'm an engineer. I fix quantum stabilizers. I'm not even good at sports. I once sprained my ankle playing zero-gravity ping-pong. Don't worry, Xylera said, her voice as smooth as ever. You won't be alone. We have ways of training even the most reluctant participants. And besides, she leaned in close, her six eyes gleaming with a dark amusement. You don't really have a choice. And with that, she snapped her fingers. Before Horace could react, two large, burly aliens, both about twice his size with four arms each, stepped out from the shadows and grabbed him by the arms. Hey, wait a minute, Horace protested, struggling uselessly in their iron grip. I'm not. Look, I've got work to do. You can't just... 
But Xylera was already walking away, her laughter echoing through the chamber as Horace was dragged toward the far end of the arena. The next few weeks were a blur. At first, Horace had assumed he'd simply be thrown into the arena to be slaughtered by some hulking alien creature. But no, Xylera had other plans. She had a methodical approach to her hobby. Horace was fitted with one of the metallic collars, and through a combination of high-tech conditioning and brutal training sessions, he was molded into something he never thought he could become, a gladiator. The training was effective, to say the least. The collar, as it turned out, wasn't just for show. It had a way of encouraging compliance, delivering sharp jolts of pain whenever Horace hesitated or failed to perform at the level expected of him. It suppressed his panic and fear, focusing his mind on one thing, survival. Even so, Horace's mind remained stubbornly focused on one thing, work. As he slashed through training dummies with weapons that felt too large for his hands, his thoughts drifted to the quantum stabilizers he hadn't finished calibrating. As he ducked and rolled under the swings of his fellow trainees, he found himself mentally reviewing maintenance logs. As he was dragged back to his cell, bruised and exhausted after each grueling session, he lay awake thinking about the fine-tuning of energy fields he had yet to complete. I have to get back to work, he muttered to himself one night, staring up at the cold, metallic ceiling of his cell. This is just a, a distraction. I've got stabilizers to fix. The first time Horace fought in the arena, he was terrified, not of death, but of failure. For all his reluctance, the collar had conditioned him to fight with a ruthless efficiency. By the time he stepped into the center of the arena, surrounded by thousands of roaring spectators, he was no longer the bumbling quantum engineer who had stumbled down to the planet's surface with his boss. He was something else now, Zalera's prized fighter. His opponent was a hulking reptilian creature, easily twice his size, with rows of jagged teeth and claws that could probably tear through steel. Horus had no business being in the same arena with it. But as the creature charged at him, he felt a strange calm settle over him. Instinct took over. He dodged the first swing of the creature's claws with a grace he didn't know he had, rolling to the side and coming up with one of the energy blades he'd been assigned. The collar buzzed faintly, pushing him forward, guiding his movements. He slashed at the creature's leg, just below the knee, and it let out a roar of pain as it stumbled. Before he knew it, the fight was over. Horace stood over the unconscious, or possibly dead, body of the creature, panting heavily, the energy blade still humming in his hand. The crowd roared in approval, their cheers echoing through the arena. But all Horace could think about was, this is a waste of time. I have work to do. I don't have the time to battle and play gladiator. This is ridiculous, he thought. But Zylera could see that having a carrot on a string above his head, which was the work that he loved more than anything else in the entire universe, would be the way she would keep him here, or so she had thought. She was to overconfident, like a smiling con artist, in her assessment of humans' abilities and wiliness to get back to something more cozy and familiar. What she failed to account for is human adaptability and the knack to find a solution for any problem, from quantum string theory on how to make the perfect bowl of ice cream and how to avoid getting sucked into black holes while looking for a nice place to have a picnic and other space mysteries. Horace, while playing along with Zylara's twisted hunger games, he had already formulated a plan, much like how a baboon could use a stick to eat termites while mating. This also just comes naturally to humans. His plan was simple, well to him at least. While the crowd were distracted with the victory, he would use the power form the collar around his neck to short-circuit the cage and locking mechanism with a quick flick of the energy blade to his neck collar, which overloaded it with ease, catching everyone off guard, including the guards. Since no one had really tried to escape before, it was relatively easy to maneuver his way back to the space dock, but his mind was heavy with the fact that he could not go back to the space station as it surely would be on alert by now, thanks to Zylara for mucking up my day of fun. I could have been having a fun day at work. The quantum stabilizers will have to wait, I guess. With that, Horace plotted a course for Earth. He needed to warn them about the injustice of an inappropriate workplace relationship, 
and the need to file a complaint with HR about the dangers of a simple lunch with your boss.